But this year, we also have set a very ambitious goal for ourselves together. And that is raising $40,000 that will go outside these doors to serve those in need over Christmas. And it's going to be divided equally between four incredible projects. Uh, two local here in our neighborhood, and then two globally through our long-standing partnership with Hands at Work in Africa. Now, last week, I talked about some of the amazing benevolent work that is already happening in and through Commons. Today, we actually have my old friend, Lynn Kudowitz, from Hands at Work here to talk to us specifically about some of the child sponsorships that we participate in in the community of Kalende, Zambia and how that is working that community to change some lives there. So Lynn, come on up to the stage and give him a hand while he comes up here. So thank you. Okay, yes. So it's 10 years actually. Last month was 10 years that Jamie, my wife and I got sent out to Africa from here in Calgary and actually Jeremy was there on stage with us that Sunday and he preached the message as we got sent out. So it's good to be here with you again, Jer, on stage celebrating 10 years. And it's 10 years really of Jamie and I learning. We learned slow how to serve in the, in the AIDS crisis in Africa, some of the most vulnerable families. And we've been back here now two years trying to do it from this side of the world and and I realize it's tough. You know, it's tough. Just our lives are full and, and distracted and so many options. So it's tough to remember those families. And so I don't take it for granted when a church does remember them and commit to, to care for them in some way. So this morning, I want to say thank you. Thank you to, to this church for committing with us, Hands at Work, to serve some of these most vulnerable families, particularly in Kalende community in Zambia. Now, I know Kalende is hard to reach, right? It's Zambia is the other side of the world, and even once you're in Zambia, getting to Kalende is like a trek to a lost city. But I love that because there's something about reaching those who are hard to reach. You know, those who are so obviously outside our circle, that's so special because it's so like Jesus, right? It's Christ-like to love those who who are, who are hard to love and it's costly and they give nothing back to us. There's just something beautiful about it. And when we do it, we bring the kingdom into a tangible presence here on earth. So I like that. And that's actually what's happening every day in Kalende. The frontline workers, our care workers, local volunteers from local churches, that's what they do. They take responsibility for some of the toughest situations in these communities. Um, in October, I was in a community in Zambia, just neighboring to Kalende, and we were in a, walking in a home looking for a girl, a 13-year-old girl named Victoria, who was, who, was, who was missing, and she was in a really tough situation. Her mom and dad are gone, living in an older shack with, a, with an elderly grandma and three little siblings, and, you know, I stood there in that home, and they, they're in a crisis, right? No food. The grandma's so overwhelmed. She doesn't know what she's going to do to care for this family. The little kids, none of them in school. And I tell you, just like hope drained out of that family. Because what they do to survive, they send Victoria out and she goes out into local, I mean, terrible bars, these places where just she does whatever she has to do to bring back money for that family. And it's, it's dangerous, right? It's a time bomb that they're in. Victoria herself, the grandma, the little kids, they need intervention so like immediately to be cared for because they're not far behind her. And I say that, I tell you that story because these are the families that we work with, right? They need help. Grandma needs a friend. She needs encouragement. Victoria needs somebody to pursue her and to love her, to accept her and to heal her when she's ready. And the little ones, they need intervention. They need role models and they need it quick. Now our care workers, the local church, they're doing that. They are, they're doing it. Um, when we first started working in these villages, we walked together with the care workers. We saw the pain of these families, and they said, this is my community. Nobody else is doing it, so I will do it. I'll take responsibility. And they're doing that, but it's tough. It's hard work, and they need friends, right? They need friends from outside, and they need to be equipped, you know? The care workers in there, they, that village, they need big pots and, and extra food to cook a meal so that Victoria, so she can come in off the streets, right? That's important. They need that. They need um, books and, and simple things to give those kids the hope of an education, the little ones, right? Basic stuff, but crucial stuff that makes a huge impact. And that's where we can come in, the church outside of Africa. We can be that friend to those care workers. Remember, the local church, they're already taking responsibility. We just want to meet them halfway. 
in Kalende, those care workers that, that you're connected with, they're taking responsibility for 100 kids in this village in the middle of nowhere, and it's tough for them. Um, and as Kensington Commons, you put up your hand, right, to say, we will be that friend to those guys. You'll partner with them. You said you'd partner with them to, to work with those care workers, to equip them with just those basic things that they need. And I love that. So that's what we're doing together. Hands at work, Kensington Commons, and the care workers in Kalende. And when we do that, you know, we are a part of something beautiful that's growing. People in the midst of a crisis, themselves being able to stand up and live out God's mission and dream to restore their villages. And so I'm just, it's amazing and I'm grateful that, like you, I get to choose to be a part of it. So thank you. That's great. I've actually been in Kalende a couple times. We sent a team there last year and we have a team that will be going back in 2017 if you're interested in that. But the most amazing thing is seeing this local community take responsibility for their own situation. And we get to come alongside, not as saviors, but as partners, to give them the tools and the resources that they need to care for their own community and the children that are there, which is a really incredible privilege to get to do. Now, if you want to contribute to that, um, you can mark your envelope, Advent Projects, and all of those funds are going to go to these projects that we have chosen this Christmas. 